In problems of a small data set, having clean and consistent labels is especially important. Let's start with an example. One of the things I used to do is use machine learning to fly helicopters. One of the things you might want to do is take as input the voltage applied to the motor or to the helicopter rotor and predict what is the speed of the rotor. You can have this type of problem not just for flying helicopters but for other control problems where you're controlling the speed of a motor. So let's say you have a data set that looks like this where you have five examples, so a pretty small data set. Because this data set, that is the output y, is pretty noisy, it's difficult to know what is the function you should use to map voltage to the rotor speed in RPM. Maybe it should be a straight line, something like that, or maybe something like that, or maybe it should go up and then be flat like that, or maybe it should be a curve like that. Really hard to tell. When you have a small data set, five examples and noisy labels, it's difficult to fit a function confidently. Now, if you had a ton of data, this data set is equally noisy as the one on the left, but you just have a lot more data. Then the learning algorithm can average over the noisy data sets, and you can now fit a function you know, pretty confidently, it looks like curve should be something like that. A lot of AI had recently grown up in large consumer internet companies, which may have 100 million users or a billion users and does very large data sets. And so I think some of the practices for how to deal with small data sets have not been emphasized as much as would be needed to tackle problems where you don't have a hundred million examples, but only a thousand or even fewer. So to me, the interesting case is what if you still have a small data set, five examples, same as the example on the left, but you now have clean and consistent labels. In this case, you can pretty confidently fit a function through your data. And with only five examples, you can build a pretty good model for predicting, for predicting speed as a function of the input voltage. I've trained computer vision systems with just 30 images and had it work just fine. And the key is usually to make sure that the labels are clean and consistent. Let's take a look at another example of phone defect inspection. The task is to take as input pictures like these and to decide whether there is a defect or not on the phone. Now, if labeling instructions are initially unclear, then labelers will label images inconsistently. It may be that when there's a giant scratch, you know, sufficiently large one, that everyone will agree is a defect. And if there's a tiny little ding, that inspectors will ignore it. But there's this region of ambiguity where different inspectors will label different scratches with a length between 0.2 and 0.4 in slightly inconsistent ways. So one solution to this would be to say, why don't we try to get a lot more pictures of phones or scratches and then see what the inspectors do. And then maybe eventually we can train a neural network that can figure out from the image what is and what isn't a scratch on average. Maybe that approach could work, but it'd be a lot of work and require collecting a lot of images. I found that it can be more fruitful to ask the inspectors to sit down and just try to reach agreement on what is the size of scratch that would cause them to label a scratch with a bounding box versus the size is too small and not worth bothering labeling. So in this example, if the labelers can agree that the point of transition from where a little ding becomes a defect is a length of 0 0.3, then the way they label the images becomes much more consistent and it becomes much easier for a learning algorithm to take as input images like this and consistently decide whether something is a scratch or a defect. Just to be clear, in this example, the input to the learning algorithm is images like that on the left, not the stretch length like that on the right. But the point is, if you can get inspectors to agree 
what is a stretch and what isn't a stretch, and to define the toss as putting bounding boxes around defects that are over 0.3 millimeters in length, then that will cause your images to be labeled more consistently and allow your learning algorithm to achieve higher accuracy even when your data set isn't that big. So you've seen a couple examples now of how label consistency helps a learning algorithm. I want to wrap up this video with one more thought, which is that big data problems can have small data challenges too. Specifically, problems of a large data set, but where there's a long tail of rare events in the input, will have small data challenges too. For example, the large web search engine companies all have very large data sets of web search queries, but many web queries are actually very rare. And so the amount of clickstream data for the rare queries is actually small. Or take self-driving cars. Self-driving car companies tend to have very large data sets collected from driving hundreds of thousands or millions of hours or more. But there are rare occurrences that are critical to get right to make sure a self-driving car is safe, such as that very rare occurrence of a young child running across the highway or that very rare occurrence of a truck parked across the highway. So even if a self-driving car has a very large data set, the number of examples it may have of these rare events is actually very small. And so ensuring label consistency in terms of how these rare events are detected and labeled is still very helpful for improving self-driving cars. Or product recommender systems. If you have a catalog of hundreds of thousands or millions or more items or product recommendation systems, if you have an online catalog of anywhere from thousands to hundreds of thousands to sometimes even millions of catalogs to sometimes even millions of items, then you will have a lot of products where the number sold of that item is quite small. And so the amount of data you have of users interacting with the items in the long tail is actually small. And if there's a way, which is not easy, but if there's a way to make sure that data is clean and consistent, then that too will help your learning algorithm in terms of how it recommends or doesn't recommend items in the long tail where the amount of data per item will tend to be low. So when you have a small data set, label consistency is critical. Even when you have a big data set, label consistency can be very important. It's just that I found it easier on average to get to label consistency on smaller data sets than on very large ones. In the next video, we'll look at some concrete ideas and best practices for improving your data set's label consistency. Let's go on to the next video.